Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to present exercises on different subjects. It is important for you to know that this is a video that is part of a three-part video. In the three videos, there are going to be presented 15 different exercises. There are going to be presented five exercises in each video. Right now, uh, you can see the exercises that were presented in part one. And now, these are the exercises that are going to be presented in part two. And these are the exercises that are going to be presented in part three. If you want to try any of these exercises on your own, uh, feel free to do so uh, at the beginning of each presentation of each exercise. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you want to, or also if you want to see the approach that is taken in order to solve them, and uh, continue watching the video at that, at that point. So let's get started. So this is part two. So uh, starting with exercise number six, it says let A, B, and C be sets. Then A intersection with B without C is equal to the intersection of A and B without C. And as I said, if you want to try the exercise on your own, uh, feel free to do so. You can pause the video at this moment. Also, for any of the videos, if you want to share comments or share your solution, uh, feel free to do so down in the comments. And right now, I'll start uh, with the approach that we'll be taking in this video for proving this exercise. So, okay. Um, the it is required to prove an equality of sets, so it will be proven by equivalences. So starting S in A intersection B without C, and just by the definition of intersection, this is if and only if S is in A and S is in B without C. And now using the definition of a difference of sets, a, it gives that S is in A and a parenthesis, S is in B and S is not in C. If just because it's the best approach at this moment, it's possible to use associativity or conjunction. So just exchanging the, the parenthesis, we have that S is in A and S is in B and S is not in C. So just going back a little bit into the steps, now using the definition of intersection, uh, it gives that S is in A intersection B and S is not in C. And now using the definition of difference of sets, uh, given that S is in A intersection B without C. So at this moment, uh, we have an argument uh, connected by equivalences that starts with S in A intersection B without C and ends with S in A intersection B without C. Uh, this argument uh, proves an equality of sets, that being the first and the last one. So A intersection with B without C is equal to A intersection B without C. This is what is asked for exercise number six. So this is the end of the proof for this exercise. So, okay, moving on to exercise number seven. It says, let A, B, and C be sets. Then A union B without C is equal to A without C union B without C. So, okay, uh, if you want to uh, try the exercise on your own, uh, feel free to post the video at this moment. Either yeah, way, you can continue watching the video. Um, so, again, this is an equality of sets. And it is also going to be proven by equivalences. So starting S is in A union B without C. And now using the definition of difference of sets, it is that S is in A union B and S is not in C. And now we use the definition of union of sets. So S is in A or S is in B. Everything as a term of the conjunction with S is not in C. And at this point, uh, the next step is to just use the distribution of conjunction. So in this case, we have that the second term 
of the conjunction is going to be distributed over the disjunction. So S is in A and S is not in C, or S is in B and S is not in C. And just going back into the steps, now it is going to be used again the definition of the product. So S is in A without C or S is in B without C. And just to close up the argument, uh, the definition of union is used again. So S is in A without C, union B without C. And this uh, completes the argument uh, connected by equivalences that starts with S in A union B without C and ends with S in A without C, union B without C. Uh, so this is an argument that proves an equality of sets that have been the first and last. Uh, a little bit long, uh, the equality that is being asked. Well, okay, this would be the end of the proof for exercise number seven. Okay, just uh, moving to exercise number eight. Very interesting, this exercise. Let A, B, and C be sets. Then A union with the intersect with the difference of B without C uh, is equal to A union B without A the difference of C and A. So interesting. Oh, if you want to try this exercise on your own, again, feel free to do so. Also, you're free to continue watching the video. So again, this is an equality of sets, so it is going to be proven by equivalences. So S in A union B without C, and using the definition of union, S is in A or S is in B without C, okay? And now we use the definition of difference of sets. S is in A or S is in B and S is not in C. And now it is possible to distribute the, the disjunction over the conjunction. So S is in A or S is in B and S is in A or S is in or S is not in C. And now there is going to be uh, some tricky step uh, oh, two step. Uh, first, just to have everything ready for the tricky step, uh, let's commute the last two terms. There are a distribution that can be commuted. So uh, instead of S in A or S not in C, uh, we have that S is not in C or S is in A. And now the somewhat tricky step. Uh, is time to use the negation of conjunction, but uh, written, ba written backwards, let's say, something like that, or at least in the backwards direction that is often used. So, for example, in this case, we get a statement where we have S in A or S in B, and not S in C and S not in A. Uh, the negation of the conjunction on the last... Uh, in the last proposition, uh, would just be S not in C or S in A. So it is true that what we have right now is the negation of the disjunction that we have formerly. And so this is just an application of the De Morgan law. As I said, uh, just done backwards. And okay, at this point, uh, we can use the definition of difference, just to take out or simplify the last term. So that would be S in C without A. And we can now use the definition of union. So, okay, S is in A union B, and S is, in C, is not in C without A. And finally, we can use the definition of difference. So S is in A union B without the difference of C and A. And pretty much we already have an argument uh, connected everything by equivalences that starts with A union B without C and ends with S in A union B without the difference of C and A. So this already gives the quality of those two sets. This would be it for exercise number eight. So, okay, moving on to exercise number nine. 
this is going to be a little bit quick, but also there are tricky steps. Okay, so a given set A, uh, prove that A without A is the empty set, and A without the empty set remains being A. So uh, give it a try if you want, or also if you want, continue watching the video. So for the first part, um, okay, starting with S in A without A, using the definition of difference, this is if and only if S is in A and S is not in A. And here starts the tricks. Um, this is impossible. This is a contradiction because we have that S is in A and S is not in A. One is the negation of the other and it is not possible for any of them to be true at the same time and they are in a conjunction. So the conjunction is always false. Yeah. This was also used in the first part of the series. And so because this is a logical contradiction, we can imply whatever we want. In this case, we want to imply that S is in the empty set, just because we want to end in the empty set. But moreover, continuing with the tricks, this is also a logical contradiction. A logical contradiction can imply anything, regardless if it is uh, true or not. So it can also imply a logical contradiction. And okay, we ended up with a logical contradiction by the definition of the empty set. It is always false that S is in the empty set. Um, but because this is a logical contradiction, it can imply backwards anything. So these two underlying statements are equivalent uh, just because they are equivalent to the false. So therefore, A without A is equal to the set. And okay, this would be for part one. And now for part two, uh, just starting with S in A without the empty set, uh, using the definition of difference. This is if and only if S is in A and S is not in the empty set. Okay, everything fine. And by simplification, uh, we can have that S is in A. This is implied directly. And by the definition of the empty set, it is always true that S or any S is not in the empty set. So we can introduce the conjunction or simply the conjunction. So we can go back. And because we can go backwards, then A without the empty set is equal to A. This would be part two. So we have the two parts of exercise nine. So we are done with exercise nine. Okay, moving on to exercise 10, the last of this part. It says, let A and B be sets. Then A is containing B if and only if A without B is equal to the empty set. Okay. You will try it if you want or also, if you want to continue watching B. Um, this B, this exercise is interesting because this is an equivalence. And at least I would recommend to break it into its implications. So let A be an XP set. If A is containing B, then A without B is equal to the empty set. And if A without B is equal to the empty set, then A is containing B. So uh, two parts, kind of, but those two implications are the breakup of the equivalence. And as always, uh, also for you to remember, we can always go back and forth between the equivalence and the two implications in which it can be break. So if we prove the two, the two implications, I will have the equivalence proven. So also just because this is also going to be used or I recommend using this, this is the definition of containment of sets. So just because we are using the A containing B statement in there, it is useful to have it in can for all S, S in A implies that S is in B and by the law of contraposition, this is if and only if for all S, 
S not in B implies S not in A. So all of this is just for you to have a, at your disposal. Um, if you want to try the exercise starting from this point, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, there is a lot more tools for you to use at this moment. But also if you want to just continue watching the argument, uh, feel free to do so. Okay. So for the first implication, suppose that A is containing B, and then it is needed to prove the equality of A without B is equal to the integer. So S in A without B, and from here on, we go with equivalences. So by the definition of difference, this is if and only if S is in A and S is not in B. If by the contraposition law, now just because we have that S is in A and A is containing B, we have that S is not in B in place that S is not in A. So we are going to have that S is in A and S is not in A. So a little bit interesting. But we could also use that if S is in A, then S is going to be in B. It works either way. But again, now we are going to have the statement that is always false. S in A and S is not in A. One is the negation of the other one, so this is always false. And now we can imply A. That being that S is in the empty set, and this was also a logical contradiction, so we can always go back. Pretty similar to one of the previous exercises. This would be for the first part, because now we have the quality that A without B is equal to the empty set. So for the Second part, suppose that A with a B is equal to the empty set. And now it is required to prove a containment. So for containments, one of the magic phrases, let S in A. But now it can be a little bit hard, or, or at least it was for me to come up with the next step. So, uh, sometimes it is said when there are no more ideas, but it just seems uh, necessary for something to be true, uh, we use proof by contradiction. And for this case, uh, we want for S to be in B, that would be the next step. So suppose that S is not in B. So, okay. But just uh, having the conjunction, uh, and we have then that S is in A and S is not in B. So by the definition of difference, then this gives that S is in A without B, uh, which is equal to the empty set. So S is going to be in the empty set. This is a logical contradiction. Again, this is impossible. So uh, from the very start, there was a problem with S not in B, and because that was uh, that have a problem, that needs to be false. So S in B needs to be true. And now we have an entire argument that started with S in A and ends with S in B. So A is containing B. And this would be for the second implication of exercise 10. Uh, having the two implications, we have the equivalence. This would be it for exercise 10. So this would be it for this video. Let me know if you like the video. Uh, you can leave me questions, comments. Also, if you want me to treat a certain topic, uh, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.